What are the top three attributes that I look for in a programming language? So I'll give you the quick bullet points. Number one, speed of development. Number two, speed of runtime. Number three, how complex the infrastructure around the language is. And there's actually a fourth, but that's the bonus. I'll save that to the end. This video is sponsored by TopTal. TopTal is a fully remote company that helps top freelance developers find contracts with leading 500s and innovative Silicon Valley firms, including HP, Motorola, Shopify, and many more. So TopTal is a nice network that gets you up and running quickly with that, and it takes care of a lot of headaches that a lot of developers may have fears about. Number one, speed of write time. This is something I've talked about many times in the past where, for example, for me, Java was my top language in the 1990s, no question, in 1990s, early 2000s. But I would not, I would not use Java today because it's just too verbose, takes too long to build anything in Java today. It's too much code you gotta write. It's just too much code you gotta write. And it's not just my opinion. Google is doing the same thing. Android development is now quickly moving over to Kotlin, which is a lighter, nimbler language. So Google, who owns Android, as you know, said, ah, if you're gonna do Android, Kotlin's our number one choice, Java's number two. Why? Same thing, speed of write time. We wanna be able to get apps quickly, out as quickly as possible, so you can get it in the hands of the end users, so the end users can give you feedback, and then you're gonna know how good your app is. The iterative process of software development is exactly that. De develop very quick, get the version one out, get people using it, get the feedback, refactor, refine, refactor, refine, get it out again, refactor, refine, and refactor, refine. You need a quick to write language to do that. Java is just not the case. So uh, again, I'm not picking on Java. First bullet point, Java's a great language. If you're learning Java, it's worth learning because you're gonna learn the basic fundamental principles that are applicable to any modern language. So you learn Java, basically you've learned much about Python, JavaScript, PHP, Ruby, not that's what you want to learn Ruby, but anyway, that's a Ruby joke. Um, yeah, so don't worry about Java. Are there gonna be jobs for Java? Of course there gonna be jobs for Java for a long time, but I don't think so much in new development. I think all the jobs in Java, or a lot of them, or a majority of them, are gonna be in new software, excuse me, in maintaining older legacy software. So if you have a company, a big company has invested half a million, a million, five million in Java, they're not gonna trash all their Java, they're gonna hire Java coders to maintain it add modules, et cetera. So there's gonna be plenty of Java jobs in the future, so don't worry about that. That being said, um, I'm just using Java as an example. C++ could be another example. You'll see it, that's a trend in software development. It's not just my opinion. Later, nimbler languages, meaning languages that are qu much quicker to write in, will uh, win in the end, especially as uh, computers and software uh, architectures become more and more efficient and advanced. So for example, uh, PHP and uh, Python and Ruby run very slow compared to Java, but when it comes to most web apps, especially with PHP, even though Java can run faster than PHP, that's for sure, uh, at runtime, uh, you won't see a difference, so it doesn't make a difference. So the next thing is runtime. Now, that's another thing I look at. How fast will this code run? For that reason, I, for web app development, when I went from Java, I was looking at Ruby, I was looking at Python, but they were too slow at runtime for my taste at that time. So I went to PHP. PHP still to this day runs much faster than Python or uh, Ruby uh, in terms of web application development. It's just a much faster, nimbler language uh, at runtime. In terms of write time, they're about the same, I would guess. I haven't done it, you know, uh, a study on that, but it's they're in the same league, if you will. JavaScript too. JavaScript is uh, very fast at write time, uh, pretty fast at runtime, especially asynchronous type of stuff. You want to get into Node. Again, it's project specific. So number one, how quickly you can write with the language is my top number one priority. Number two is how quickly the language runs. Number three is how complex is the infrastructure around the language. Like, are you gonna to have to uh, hook yourself up to a quantum computer to figure out how to, how to get a, a particular framework up and running? You know, with PHP, it's like, boom, you're done. Java, it's like, oh, you gotta install the Java, you gotta install Java, you gotta set up your class path, you gotta make sure everything's working, blah, 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 blah. 
I found the same thing with Ruby and the gems at the time. I'm sure it's much more refined, but even experts in Ruby will admit that to get up and running with Ruby versus PHP, it's much more difficult. Although it's still simple compared to the Java world. So let's talk about number three, simple infrastructure. As I said, you want a simple infrastructure around the language that you're working with. That's the problem with Java again. To get up and running in Java is a pain compared to, let's say, PHP or Python, Django, et cetera, et cetera. So that's another factor to look into. So what's that bonus fourth one? And maybe this should have been uh, number one. Hard to say. Uh, well, that bonus fourth one is ease of learning. How easily can you train somebody up in a particular language, a particular technology? Again, because of Java's complexity, uh, not just the language itself, but also the inf infrastructure around Java. It takes a long time to get somebody up to speed in Java. It takes multiples in terms of, get, of getting somebody up to speed with PHP. You get somebody up uh, to speed in PHP in a relatively short period of time and they're productive. Uh, with Java, not so much. Ruby is much easier and Python is much easier and JavaScript much easier in Java. But when it comes to the web stack, uh, PHP is still uh, easier. That being said, I'm not saying you everybody jump into PHP. I'm just telling you from my own personal experience. Again, this video is about the principles. The principles, what I'm looking for. So, you know, if you think of it from a point of view of the owner of the app or the business owner, do you want to have an infrastructure? You want your business to be reliant on a technology that you have to hire, like Bill Gates and. Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk to uh, get the thing going. You know what I mean? You you don't need uh, you don't want to have the Einstein of programmers to uh, maintain your app. You want something that's relatively simple but still performing. So again, languages like JavaScript Node or Python Django or Ruby Rails or PHP Laravel they're much simpler than let's say Java, for instance. How about C Sharp .NET? I would say it's probably somewhere in between Java and the, uh, the aforementioned later languages like the PHP and the Node, et cetera, in terms of complexity because Microsoft's uh, tools surrounding uh, .NET are pretty uh, sophisticated. What to take away from this video is that uh, the principles, rather than the languages, I'll leave you to research the languages because you could watch this five years from now, 10 years from now, and these principles will still apply. That's the beauty of these principles. So number one, look at the language that's quickest uh, to write with so you can get your projects out quickly as possible. Look at runtime speed. Although, you know, I, I would put runtime speed as the last because computers just get faster and faster. So runtime speed and the actual real world differences between one language and the next is going to become uh, diminished. It's going to continue to, to diminish over time. The next one is the complexity of infrastructure around the language, right? You don't want to have to hire uh, Einstein to get things going. And number four uh, is the um, how easy it is to get somebody up and running. I don't know if it's number four or number three. You know, you don't want a language that's uh, very, very complex. You want to be able to onboard people into the project as quickly as possible. That will make the language more viable long-term in the marketplace, by the way. Archaic, super hard technologies, that may, that may appeal to nerds who go, ooh, that's gonna mean it's valuable. Maybe, but if it's too hard and too expensive, businesses won't use it, period. So don't worry about it. You know, when it comes to languages and salaries, you see all these salary ratings, and you see, ooh, uh, data scientists in Python make a little bit more. It's misleading. It's misleading because in the end, what you'll see, and I've talked about it in other videos, so I won't do it here, but in the end, over a period of just a few years, the salaries of individual coders, regardless of the language, they kind of even out. And what really differentiates you, what you're gonna earn versus somebody else, is your individual skills as a developer, but also in terms of communication and uh, communications with people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Once again, this video was sponsored by TopTal, which is a, an elite network for freelancers. They put you together with top uh, clients who have some uh, projects that need to be uh, built. They take care of the billing, they take care of the client acquisition and the collections. So they take out a lot of the uncertainty in terms of the business end of things. So it's a great way to get into freelancing, especially uh, if you have uh, some pretty good experience in the field already. Uh, they do have some requirements. You have to have at least one year of experience as a developer and they're gonna test you out in terms of your communication skills and so forth. All right, that's it for now. If you wanna learn web development, you wanna learn the basics of freelancing or being an entrepreneur, links below. I have to shamelessly self-promote my own stuff, right? All right, thanks for watching, bye-bye.
Thank you.